Hello, let's talk about light. Um, light matter and the energy that powers the entire universe. All right, ladies and gentlemen, astronomy is all about looking out into space and gathering information. So the big question is, how do you gather information from things that are light years away? Uh, things that take years and years and years for their information to reach us. There is really only one thing that travels the distances that we deal with in the heavens, and that is light. Light is the, the tool. Light is the thing that astronomers work with all the time. And before we get deeper into astronomy, we need to spend some time talking about light, um, exactly what it is, the properties of it, and all of the different types of light. So let's talk about light in general. Um, light is a wave, meaning that it has wavelength frequency, and we'll talk about that later. But waves are similar properties to what you're going to find um, water waves near the beach, where there is an oscillating, undulating, up and down motion to this object. The crazy and wacky thing about light is light is also made of particles called photons. Now, the weird thing about light is when sometimes it acts like a particle, meaning little tiny sort of billiard balls or little tiny um, uh, grains of sand or grains of pepper that are hitting things. And sometimes it acts like a wave. This is called wave particle duality. And the idea is that light has both a particle nature and a wave nature. Now, if that hurts your brain a little bit, you're allowed to have that hurt your brain because there is nothing in the big world that you and I encounter on a daily basis that acts like a wave and acts like a particle. Um, the subject, the science that tries to explain this is something that is referred to as quantum mechanics. And this course is not designed to talk about quantum mechanics, but it's kind of fun to tell your friends and neighbors that you were listening to some information about quantum mechanics and it basically the weirdness that goes with light, its particle nature and its wave nature. Aside from being a wave and being made of these particles called photons, light is a form of energy and this is the energy that actually powers the Earth. Um, it is the heat and radiation that we get from the sun that actually keeps our planet warm, keeps plants growing via photosynthesis, and hence via the food chain, you and I are allowed to eat plants and animals that eat of plants. And this is a huge and important factor in the history of life. Some different properties of waves you need to know. One is the concept of wavelength. Uh, wavelength is abbreviated by the Greek letter lambda, and this is the symbol for wavelength. It is, when I hand draw it, it kind of looks like that, kind of a curvy upside down Y. And wavelength is a pretty easy concept. It is from the peak of a wave or the crest of a wave until you get to the peak or crest of the next wave. That's the length of the wave. Some waves are longer, longer wavelength, and some waves have a shorter wavelength. Now, why is this an important idea? It's a really important idea because the wavelength of a wave determines its properties. It determines whether we call it visible light or whether we call it an x-ray or whether we call it a radio wave. And the only difference between visible light, radio waves, and x-rays is the length of the waveform. So we'll talk more about that in a little bit. I love this image right here. This gives you a visual to help you understand that every color that you and I see has a unique wavelength. Um, indigo, which is kind of a purpley color, has a wavelength of 4,250 angstroms, or 425 nanometers. Now, there are two common ways that wavelength of visible light is noted. One is using angstroms. The other one is using nanometers. And an angstrom is usually abbreviated a capital A with a little 
O or zero across the top. Um, angstrom is used very often in the history of astronomy. Astronomers like angstroms, but physicists and chemists tend to like nanometers. So you are going to see both. An angstrom is 1 times 10 to the negative 10th meters, and a nanometer is 1 times 10 to the negative 9th meters. That's why these numbers up here in this chart are off by one digit, 6300 and 630. It's the units that are used. Besides wave length, which is the distance from peak to peak, there is something that is referred to as frequency. Now, I'm sure you know the word frequency. If I ask you um, what is the frequency with which you get paid, many of you are going to say you get paid every two weeks. Okay, um, And that is frequency. It, frequency is nothing more than how often something occurs. Well, wave frequency is the number of waves that occur per unit time. So some waves have a very, very high frequency, meaning that they oscillate up and down quickly, and some waves have a very low frequency, meaning they oscillate up and down less quickly. Here's one of the wacky and cool things about light. If you are talking about a color, different colors of light, red light is a low frequency wave. Um, and that means it doesn't oscillate up and down as fast as blue or violet light, which has a much higher frequency of oscillation. When you and I see visible light and we see these different colors, our eye is sort of acting like a radio receiver and it responds to these different sizes of waves and interprets them as red or yellow or blue or violet. Pretty nifty and our eye is an amazing, amazing thing. There's a very famous physicist we'll talk about multiple times this semester, and his name is Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton lived in the 1700s. He was a British gentleman. And Sir Isaac Newton discovered that white light, the light that comes from our sun, is made up of all of the colors of the rainbow. Prior to Newton, people thought that white light was pure, that white light was actually pure, and that each one of the colors was an impurity, sort of like water operates. If you had pure water, it's going to be clear, and then you add things like Kool-Aid, and it's going to give it color. Well, that's what people thought in the 1700s. That's the way they believed light operated. But what Newton discovered by doing something very, very simple, he had a small hole in a window screen, and he had a prism, and he took that prism and put it in front of this small hole, allowing a beam of sunlight to come through, and he showed that the white light contained all of the colors of the rainbow. Now, this is much more commonly known and accepted than it was 300 years ago. But somebody had to figure it out, and the fellow who figured it out was good old Sir Isaac Newton. You need to know the colors of visible light. And the colors of visible light are easily remembered by this little mnemonic device or memory aid, Roy G. Biv. And that stands for red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And you might say, Mary, what's the difference between indigo and violet? And the answer is different wavelengths, but yeah, I'm not going to ask you to like pinpoint where the indigo is and where the violet is, but you do need to know this. Be aware that when you and I actually see with our eyes all of these different colors, each one of these colors has a different wavelength, with red having a very, very long wavelength, and the blues and the violets, short wave wavelength. So there are physical form and physical properties of these colors that make them visible, um, that differentiate one wave from another. It also is how astronomers can tell a lot of information from distant stars. So I think that is going to finish off this one, and we'll come back next time, and we're going to start talking about electromagnetic waves.